Well, I am happy to report that the trem seems to be working just fine now. Uh, I don't really have anything to share because I didn't have to fix anything really. I basically just cleaned all of the tube sockets, reinstalled the tubes, and uh, yeah, it seems to be working fine now, which is fantastic. So I will quickly show that here. It is quite late, so I can't play very loud or very long, but I'll show the Vi mode and trem mode and the various speeds just very quickly. And now I will uh, show more of it in the demo, but just so you guys can hear it. So that's vibe, trem mode. Should be very similar, but a bit more choppy. Exactly what it is. The vibe is very cool cooler than the trim. That's the slowest speed, so we'll go up a speed. Definitely slowest, medium, fast, although I would say it's kind of medium, fast, too fast. But those three, I know people install a pot so you can uh, adjust it because it's literally just three resistors which I've shown before, uh, setting the trem speed. So it's very easy to modify it if you wanted to by just changing one or all three of those resistors. But it's fine. I think the slow speed works just fine for me and uh, is beautiful, actually. So there you go. That uh, fixes that issue. And that means all three channels have, we'll, we'll say, more or less a clean bill of health as far as I'm concerned. No notices crop, uh, no issue um, has cropped up. I've not noticed anything. So I feel pretty confident about doing a little playing demo now. So super excited. As far as tubes, uh, it does have JJ el 84s I put in. They were a matched quad since the uh, tubes it came with were an unknown quantity. They have no markings on them or anything. And I left the rectifier uh, as is just a Ruby 5AR4, and which is fine, I guess. Not a high quality tube, but it works. And then I left the preamp tubes as it came, except for I installed, I believe it's V2. You can confirm. Is, uh, no, not V2. Oh, sorry. I think it might be V2, but the, gosh, the order of the tubes messes me up. I believe it's this one. Yeah. This one has got a ECC82 uh, JJ, a new install there because it came with the tube that was not an ECC82 like the uh, schematic calls for. So that's the only change I made. Otherwise, I left the tube stock. And uh, they sounded good. I did actually a little bit of tube rolling in V1 here. It's got this kind of old, I think it's national branded. I don't know what that is. Yeah, national ECC83. And I did some tests with other 12AX7s I have on hand. I've got probably a dozen. And this was actually my favorite sounding of the bunch in V1. So I just kind of left them as is because it all sounded good to me. My initial testing. So with that, we can go ahead and finally move on to the playing demo. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. And uh, it's going to be loud. It's going to be glorious. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, we'll go to that now. It's going to be another day for me since it's late at night. But uh, for you guys, instantaneously. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, damn, I was hoping we wouldn't be back here so soon, but uh, <laughs> back on the workbench here with the AC30. So as you guys heard, there was that weird kind of pop crackle noise going on. Now, a little inside baseball as far as how I do these recordings and everything, just so you guys understand, uh, I wear earplugs because it is so loud inside uh, the house and I can't do it out in the garage here because my computer is a desktop all the way in the house. So there's no way for me to easily, you know, record, monitor and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I do it that way. I've got earplugs in, which means I can't really hear very much uh, just to preserve my hearing because it's so loud in that room with the AC30 cranked up. And as a result, I didn't really notice the pop or crackle noise until later with the gold top Les Paul there. And just so you guys know how I kind of do these things is I set the camera up, set the mic up roughly where I want, and then I grab a couple of guitars and just kind of start getting some bass tone, just playing around a little bit, find a tone I like, and then I will, uh, once I'm happy with it, so I'll go back, review the footage, review the audio, see if I need to make any tweaks. I take pictures of the settings on the amplifier so I can go, okay, that was a little dark with the mic. Let me, you know, adjust the tone control or whatever and I can do that. So those three videos were just basically tests I was doing before I was ready to film the actual demo there. And uh, I'm deciding to upload it just because I don't know how long it's gonna be until this amplifier is fully uh, ready to go and I can do a proper, proper demo. So now fast forward a little bit and uh, two, two issues came up. First, that's popping crackling noise on the workbench, I cannot get it to uh, be replicated. I cannot get it to happen again. To me, it sounded like it was a vibration thing. With the closed back cab that this amplifier has, it puts out so much low end that the, the head on top of the cab, it definitely is getting a lot of vibration. So it felt to me like when I was doing those slide ups on the Les Paul there, that it was hitting a note that was making it vibrate a certain way that was inducing that. So I went ahead and chopsticked the amp, meaning I took a non-conductive stick here and poked and prodded in there while the amp was turned on to see if anything gave me any pops or crackles back so I can identify a part that's failing and nothing. I got absolutely nothing. A visual inspection, I don't see any solder joints or anything that look bad, anything that's cracked. No leads are, are you know looking messed up or potentially shorting. I have no idea. I did put the head back on the cab and did more testing, cranked up at the same exact settings I was having those issues with on the normal channel, uh, it, but it happened on both the normal and brilliant. I didn't notice it with the vibe trim, but part of that might be because of you know the, the um, volume going up and down naturally. But uh, yeah, I could not replicate it even at the same settings on the cab out here in the garage. So what is it? I'm not sure. One thing I did do is take off the bottom wood here slider board and check the bottom to see if there's anything rattling or any wires or anything down there as well. And I couldn't find anything. It all looked solid to me. So to be honest, I'm really not sure what the issue is there. I'm hoping it might just be a little bit of a, a fluke since I haven't been able to, to induce it again, but I don't know. I got to do more testing. And unfortunately, it's just going to delay this quite a bit as I try and hunt down that issue. The other thing that came up is I had a tube failure. Uh, this JJ decided to give up the ghost. You can see that. Uh, so when you see that, it basically means the tube lost vacuum. Now compare it to a proper one. You can see the, uh, the difference there. So these JJs, I had a matched quad that were all, uh, uh, yeah, matched. So they were, let's see, I can grab the box here. Measured on the tube tester. 39. And uh, yeah, so unfortunately, one of them just died. I, I never used them before. They've been sitting for a while, but uh, yeah, I'm, I hadn't used them yet. So really, really frustrating. So I did swap it with a, another JJ I had, but I'm not sure the value on it. So I don't know if it's perfectly matched like the quad was before, but that's very frustrating and annoying for sure. I don't know what caused that, but I have run it since then with a the new tube and you know, the, the replacement tube didn't die, so it's not caused by the amp. It's just uh, the glass on the JJ being poor quality there. So, uh, okay, am I forgetting anything? I guess the last thing I'll mention, and I haven't done anything in this series yet showing you guys, is the cab and uh, kind of what I've been working on in that. There's still work to be done there. I will film it once it actually gets into the, the meat of it. 
But that cab is a closed back as I showed in the episode one of the series. And I also showed the speakers in it and it's got one, two, two vintage Celestian uh, Silver Alnicos. But one of them is a Recone and the other one has a Pulsonic Cone uh, code on it. So it might be a Recone, I'm not sure, but it's the code on it. Um, seems to say that it is a Pulsonic, vintage Pulsonic cone, which is what you would expect on the era. So those are kind of mid-60s uh, all the way into the 70s, as I understand it, and they are not original to this amplifier. It would have had blues. Now, the other Vox AC30 you guys saw in part one has vintage correct blues with the original cones, uh, or at least, again, Pulsonic cones like you would expect, and I do intend on swapping those into this cab. So... Potentially what I'll do is when I actually do the final demo and hopefully this thing is all dialed in, bias correctly, you know, find that popping crackling noise, we'll have the blues in the cab to make the demo a bit different. So that's kind of the plan for right now, but it is going to take me a while to finally do all of that. So there's going to be a delay on the rest of this series. But uh, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching and following along as I tackle this beast. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. More to come. And before we get back to this, I've got other amps to work on. I've got a Princeton uh, I've been waiting on parts for, and, and it just came in. So we're going to get working on that. And uh, yeah, go from there. But if you guys like this content, go ahead and give a thumbs up. Comment below. I love hearing from you guys. Honestly, the comments are what makes it worth it for me. So yeah, let's chat about it. Let me know what you guys think. Subscribe if you like it. And uh, until next time, see ya.